Thank you, thanks. Um, so nice to meet you all. My name is Dave Taylor. Um, I, yeah, I've been working on games a lot. Uh, the last uh, several years I've been working on uh, VR type stuff. Uh, the last adventure was actually not a game. It was a VR data visualization research project for the government. Um, but I'm not talking about that today. I'm talking about a crazy uh, pie in the sky, blue sky talk here uh, called Vector Money. Um, and all of this is going to talk about a replacement for scalar money, the horrible stuff in your pocket uh, that we're using to get paid. Um, uh, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, so let's just uh, tuck into it. Uh, this is something I got excited about as I started evaluating my, uh, my career and, and uh, what was paying me the most and what wasn't paying me and that sort of thing. Uh, and I'm sure you all have done that sort of evaluation yourselves. Um, so let's start with uh, what scalar money commerce is. So this is my description of what most people just refer to as capitalism or trade. Um, and, but scalar is just a fancy word for one number. Vector is a fancy word for more than one number, right? Um, and so basically, scalar money commerce uh, came around to solve a really hard problem. It's thought to have come around about 6,000 years ago, maybe in China. Uh, and that problem is how to grant wishes to one another uh, at scale, all right? So specifically, this is trading, right? Uh, and trading used to be really hard. So let's start with Sam. Sam's a chicken farmer. And Sam's got a kick-ass recipe for Thai chicken peanut sauce. Now, I'm a peanut farmer, um, and he wants my peanuts, but I don't want his chicken because I'm vegan. That sucks. Uh, but I don't want his chicken, right? Um, on the other hand, uh, I love Judy's artwork. Uh, she does the best fancy rabbits I've ever seen. Um, and she's a murderous chicken eater, and I like the irony. So she does these wonderful, ironic, uh, paintings and I want the paintings. So what we can do here is a three-way trade, but I have to find Judy for this trade to work. And fighting, finding a Judy is very hard. Um, so uh, what's probably going to happen is I'm going to take this chicken against my will and I'm going to be a chicken courier, right? And this is going to be my pro tem currency and I'm going to try to make this a liquid currency and find someone to turn it into and hopefully I'll find Judy someday and uh, I'll be able to dump this chicken uh, and get the painting. So this is a pretty excruciating process, very inefficient, right? Along comes scalar money commerce, and this made everything a lot simpler. First of all, highly divisible, so now we can do hundredths of a dollar. All we have to do is Sam pays me $1.50, he gets the peanuts. Um, uh, Judy uh, pays two fifty, gets the chicken. Uh, I pay $1.25, and I get the ironic fancy rabbit portrait. Um, and this is, this is really cool because we can do all these trades in parallel uh, and then figure out what we want to buy later. Uh, so it's much, much faster than the old uh, trading approach. Now, this begs the question, how do you come up with the price? Now, we all learn in school it's about scarcity and demand, right? Um, well, it is about that. But then we get into the real world <laughs> and we learn that price is a function of scarcity and demand and marketing and timing and currency strength and liquidity and negotiation skill and trust and relationships and wealth and psychology and precedent and reality and quality and quantity, right? Buy lots and we'll give you a big discount, right? <laughs> and so this is a really uh, complex problem and there is no formula for this. No one tells you here's the formula for calculating price. It's actually kind of a dark art. Uh, and if you want to see a game developer panic, uh, you might think that it would happen at the start of the project when you're staring at this terrible mountain of like, I've got to make this game. But game developers panic when they're done with the product uh, because then they have to put a price on it and put it in the market. And if you get that wrong, you F up huge on your ship. Uh, you can completely destroy your margins. You can completely destroy the launch. Uh, so this is something that we don't have a clear answer to. We do a lot of comps, comparison cases. Uh, the game seems to be like this one, but it's kind of not, and there's a different clientele, and I don't know, and there's a lot of psychology and anchoring and all kinds of nonsense. And then there's the whole $2.99 versus $3, that's the, the ridiculous stuff. Um, but this is really, uh, creates a lot of consternation, but there's some other issues with money, including inflation, deflation, bubbles, recessions, crashes, violence, excessive incarceration, unrest, climate change, corruption, wasted resources, pollution, famine, disease, death, and, and trauma. Um, so, what happens is when you do all of your uh, valuations of goods and services with a scalar is it becomes trivial to compare them, compare them on a line, right? 
And this really creates drama with humans because if suddenly Sam seems much greater than Dave and Judy, suddenly Dave and Judy are in this peasant class, whereas in Sam's in this awesome chicken farmer class, right? So this is why when you join a new job, your employer doesn't say, you know what you ought to do for maximum job satisfaction? You should ask all your peers what their salaries are, what their bonuses are. Oh, you'll have a great time. It'll be so motivating. Well, no, actually, that creates more drama than you can imagine. Uh, it gets people really angry because you find out this guy's getting twice your salary doing half the work because he's a badass negotiator or he knows the owner or you know, he got, he got there six months earlier or just some, some nonsense that doesn't seem to make up. And money is this one big prize. It is the liquid stuff that you can do anything with, right? Uh, so it creates, it, it creates drama and that's, uh, that's no good. So um, we've got these other problems. Uh, we've got the drama. Um, let's fix it and let's fix it. Let's go big uh, when we fix it. I don't like to criticize things without being constructive. Um, so I'd like, I'd like to fix that whole problem we have with money now by getting rid of it. So what's the bill of materials we need for a global scale vector money economy? Uh, several hundred billion cameras. Uh, I arrived at this uh, estimate by saying, let's say about 100 cameras per person, right? We'll scatter a bunch of them around the home and office, and then we'll put some others in, in public spaces. Hopefully they're shared and we'll be able to uh, aggregate everybody else's cameras, right? Uh, several billion AR glasses for the several billion people on this planet, uh, a few hundred million routers, a few million servers, uh, and several million lines of code. Um, no biggie. Uh, actually, giant biggie. This is a moonshot project, clearly, right? This, this would, to do this at a global scale would be a massive, massive undertaking, right? Um, so uh, let's start with the cameras because holy crap. Uh, they're scary. Uh, so fortunately, the cameras can be really, really simple. Uh, all you need is to get in some video, some sound, GPS optionally, uh, but you can actually do photogrammetry and figure out your position from other things, and I'll explain how that can be done. Uh, and then you broadcast packets, no security. Broadcast packets, okay? This makes it really, really simple and really, really stupid. You can implement this thing in something the size of a matchbox or smaller, okay? Um, so now we've made the cameras really simple. Where do we put them? And the answer is everywhere. Here are the overlapping cameras that would be in my bathroom, for example, right? Uh, which sort of, uh, so, so what you can see here is that camera one has camera two in its view frustum, okay? So the cameras can see each other in addition to me. And that's important because the cameras thereby becomes sort of a meat space blockchain. They're verifying each other's content, you see? And you can, and this wasn't drawn in, but if you had a third camera here that was looking at a, another view frustum, you could daisy chain these, right? You could connect all these view frustums together, and now they're all self-verifying. They're all verifying in this giant continuous pool of verification. So if Dave walks from this camera over to that camera, you can see it. You can see me continuously go through them. And if someone fiddles with the camera to try to mess with it, you see it in another camera, right? Now, this is starting to sound Orwellian and scary, I'm sure. Um, and let me just scare you all the way now. So I'm, I would propose more cameras in the toilet, maybe four pointed up at your privates, uh, maybe another four pointed down at the, at the bowl. Uh, and, and why? Because Let's think about it. The, the most important information about the health of your GI tract, which is, <laughs> which is an enormous part of the health of us, right? And, and the most direct measure of what is actually in our diet, huh? right? There's, there's what we say and there's what we do, right? And, and we take that information right now, that pivotal, that pivotal diagnostic information, and we literally flush it down the toilet. We flush it down the toilet. And, and so, but by the way, let's scare you some more. Let's put, let's put some cameras in the shower. Let's put multiple cameras in the shower. Now, now by now, you should start be feeling a little bit, uh, I don't know, a little uncomfortable. Um, so uh, we've stripped privacy away. This is the Band-Aid tri treatment to, to privacy, right? Uh, so once you strip it away, primates can't handle that. We need, we need privacy, right? So we need to emulate it somehow. We're already in a post-privacy era, but without the emulation, which kind of sucks. 
Uh, this is sort of the TMZ culture of like, hey, I've got the video, check it out, right? Information is not responsibility, information is power, right? So information needs to transition into responsibility. This is a very, very different vibe. So for your cameras, you basically specify your footage requirements. So they're broadcast everywhere and anybody can pick them up. But if you do pick them up, these are your requirements, okay? And of course, we're watching you. Um, so my requirements for my shower footage would be, you know what, if you want to do a longitudinal study on the length of my showers and the effect on my, longitude, uh, the effect on my longevity, by all means, anonymize me, but inform me of the results because I want to find out if my long showers are killing me, right? So dermatology, if you see a mole growing over time, um, it could be precancerous. You could schedule me an appointment with the doctor. You could inform me, right? You could have dramatically increased the quality of my life and lowered the healthcare costs by helping me avoid chemo, by scraping that little effort off, and we're done, right? If I fall down in the shower and I start bleeding out because I brained myself, uh, let the EMS know, let my family know, right? You just saved my life with cameras in the shower. Uh, and of course, creative. We've all been in the shower and had all of our brilliant ideas in the shower, and if you've got cameras in there, then you could have a protocol that says, you know, family and friends see the creativity, uh, as well as myself, but let's blur the privates to not freak them out. Uh, and if you want to use the footage for smut, don't let me know, don't let my friends know, don't let my family know, all right? Uh, and, but by all means, go, go smut it up, right? But if I'm providing you value, if I'm providing a service with this camera footage, either by doing science, right, saving money with healthcare, uh, you know, lowering the cost of emergency care, capturing, lowering the latency of being able to have actionable creativity that can be used straight from shower in product, right? Um, and smut, whatever you're getting from the smut, right? Uh, I should be able to realize that value. So now I can actually get paid, we're over, we're over money, but I can actually be uh, journaling the value I'm creating for society um, taking a shower. So now we've got a lot of footage, We've got some responsibilities if you want to uh, look at that footage, which very much changes the culture. Um, there's, there's too much to, to store on these little matchbox uh, cameras. So you're gonna pick up that Wi-Fi and put them in storage servers, right? So these are literally just going to stream and compressed uh, video, that is it. And they're going to literally be sitting there as, hey, here's a hard line of the internet so you can get at this footage. Anybody can get at it. Same way that it's broadcast, unencrypted, you can just get at it, right? Um, however, we're tracking your IPs. Um, so now you got the footage there, you're gonna wanna start doing a ton of image processing, right? This is where you go into every camera and you say, uh, let's see, we've got these cameras in the living room, that appears to be Dave in the middle of the living room, and he appears to be, ah yes, Dave is dancing, and the dog is in the kitchen, and he appears to be afraid. And this is the kind of thing that the image processing, you know, tons of processors, not necessarily a lot of storage, it's chewing all this up and figuring out the semantic content of, of a scene, uh, of, of, a, of a space, a li living room or an outdoor area, right? Um, once you've done all this image processing and you've got the, the semantic information about the world, um, you send it to the gameplay server. Um, and this is, and if this is sounding familiar, it's a lot like an MMO, right? So all this data comes in, the world, we, we've got the world state in a database, and this is where the, re, the, the rubber hits the road on trade. This is where we say, here's the value you're providing to someone else, uh, and we'll get to how, how we know you're providing to so, so value to someone else, and we do something about it. We send it back out to Wi-Fi. This is oversimplified. There's not a single gameplay service for the globe that is broadcasting Wi-Fi. Uh, it would obviously be distributed, uh, but that goes to AR glasses. Now, what's on the AR glasses? Motivations. Um, I should add on this slide here, this is doing an enormous amount of graph theory, right? Because there's all these um, basically directed graphs saying, uh, you know, I, I, I want the uh, ironic fancy, uh, uh, fancy rabbit art, um, and Sam wants the peanuts, and Judy wants the, the chicken, right? And, but at a global scale. Uh, and it's, it's essentially arbitrating, like who can I matchmake with this, right? So if you think like matchmaking in most servers, it's essentially putting us together and, and having us help each other. And it can be incredibly indirect, just like it's incredibly indirect with money where you have this medium of exchange, except it's actually doing the indirection carefully without losing any information. And that's what's key. The problem with scalar money is that you lose tons, tons of information, right? So 
So what's showing up on these augmented reality glasses, right? So this is peanut farmer Dave walking out his front door and he has a sidewalk in front of him and he really just has a simple choice. You don't need to overwhelm me with choices. You just need to highlight the path that is gonna give me the things that, are, that I've already stated I want, right? And that's enough, right? So in my case, the, to the left might be the hammock and I can take a nap and to the right is my well and I can draw some water and water the peanuts. Maybe it's the shed, I could go to, you know, do some farming, I could go do some plowing, whatever it is, right? So I can use this as a very subtle, very nuanced way to, to self-manipulate, to push myself uh, to do the things that are in my best interest. Now, how do I know what, I, what is in my best interest? It's because I said so. I want shelter. Now, I'm not very demanding on shelter. It appears I can just live in a cardboard box, and that's probably accurate, right? But I'm quite picky about my food. I need all this stuff, and I need to be sort of an asshole about it, right? And then uh, I need time with family, right? I need fancy rabbits, obviously. I need puppies. I need new games. These are, these are the things I want. Um, and then there's a societal wish list, and this can be uh, generated, uh, sorry, uh, this can be generated from uh, a compilation of all the personal wish lists, or it can be a separate, you know, voted upon thing that the, the populace looks for. And, and these are all sorts of the typical things that you wouldn't, you know, maybe our country doesn't value these things, but imagine a country that did. Um, you know, you, you could put all these things uh, uh, in, in this list. And so now you've got the personal motivations for, you know, the, the personal wish list for everybody, the societal wish list for everybody. And this is enough to create a well-paced game. So now I can start, so this is, a, this is what a typical game pacing curve looks like. You, you learn a new skill, it gets more and more difficult, and then, that's, then that ch plowing challenge gets easier, then you learn planting, that gets easier, you learn harvesting, et cetera, right? Um, and in this case, uh, the system is going to reward me with a puppy after I finish that plowing, because that's a lot of hard work, right? So puppies, right? So I get my puppy, I do the planting, the family visits, they see that I've planted, see I'm a farmer and I've got a puppy, right? Now I'm harvesting, maybe I get on my computer just a giant trove of fancy rabbits, um, and then processing the peanuts. I'm roasting them, I'm bagging them, I'm shipping them. Uh, maybe I get a brand new MOBA game to, to make me happy, right? And the key to this is, do I trust that it works? Is it rewarding me for the work I'm doing? And the irony is that that's exactly why we let money be a part of our system, is that we trust it works, or at least we used to trust it works. That trust is, is eroding. Um, but, but trust is the, is the, the foundation. So um, in summary, commerce requires trust, uh, not money. It can be faster better and more fun uh, by essentially returning to the original goal of trade, which is fulfilling each other's wishes. Thank you. Mm -hmm.